truly believe that the word that I'm going to share with you tonight, amen, is right in line with the spirit that we feel here tonight. Last week we began a series, The Significance of Separation. Tonight is part two, The Significance of Separation. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you tonight, amen. The Lord laid this on my heart. Amen. And, and it has to do with being, uh, we're in this world. Everybody say, we're in this world. We're in this world. We are not of this world. We're this world. Amen. We're going to talk tonight about silent saints, closet Christians, and passive Pentecostals. And we are none of the above. Praise the Lord. And if you are, we're going to get that out of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you don't have any choice in the matter. Amen. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 2. Read verses 12 through 16. And it says in the King James Version, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? And others mocking, These men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. If you want a reference for, for what he's saying there, he's talking in the Old Testament in Joel chapter 2. You can read that later on. But something that happened is the day of Pentecost. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Everybody that was there thought they were drunk. There's something wrong with these people. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 5. It says, But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy. These are people who didn't believe the word. They didn't believe in the way these others were acting. They took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason. Jason was a man of God. He was a leader of the church and certain brethren and says and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Talking about the church folks here. Saying they've turned the world upside down. These people who are filled with the Holy Ghost, they've turned the world upside down, and they're here too. Amen. These people are radical. Folks, if we're separated unto God, we need to be radical in everything that we do. Praise the Lord. We cannot be silent. We cannot be in the closet. We cannot be passive about anything that we do. Right? And someone say amen. Amen. In Acts chapter 26, verse 24 says, Suddenly Festus shouted, and I'm reading out of the NLT version, it says, Suddenly Festus shouted, Paul, you are insane. You're crazy. Too much study has made you crazy. But Paul replied, I am not insane, most excellent Festus. What I'm saying is the sober truth. And King Agrippa knows about these things. I speak boldly, for I am sure these events are all familiar to him. And that last part of Scripture says, that's not the Scripture that's up there now, uh, Jacob. We're reading Acts chapter 26. Amen. And King Agrippa knows about these things. I speak boldly, for I'm sure of these events are all familiar to him. For they were not done in a corner. Amen. What we do for the kingdom of God yes. cannot be silent and it cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. It's got to be out there and it has to be in your face. Amen. I've got an old shirt that I wore out. But I really need to get me a, a new one. Because on the back, it's got a fist doubled up. And it says, in your face, devil. 
Amen. amen. And that's what this is all about. Someone say amen. Amen. We want to say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let your light. Let your light. Fill my heart. Fill my heart. And shine throughout. And shine throughout. This world that I'm living in. Lord, let me not be silent. Lord, let me not be passive. Lord, let me realize that I must live my life for the world to see. And it all has to be done as unto you. Everyone say in Jesus' name. God bless you as you are seated. We're continuing our series entitled The Significance of, of Separation. And last week I said during these, this series we will address some things perhaps uh, that are not heaven or hell issues. However, they are things that define living a separated life, uh, separated from the world unto God. And tonight in talking about and discussing silent saints, uh, closet Christians, uh, and passive Pentecostals, uh, I strongly believe that this is definitely something something that is a heaven or hell issue. Amen. You can't be silent in living your life for God. Right. Amen. Amen. You cannot be a closet Christian and think you're going to walk through the pearly gates. And you cannot be a passive Pentecostal and think that you're going to be singing in heaven's choir. Amen. Amen. Because if you think you are, you've got another thing coming. If you think uh, there are far too many people that I know, uh, amen, that, that they are closet Christians. Uh, I come in contact with them all the time, uh, amen, and they're, they're just living out there. They don't care what you think or what you know about them, but as soon as they find out that you're a Christian, all of a sudden they're a Christian too. Right? And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, all this stuff that they've lived out there in front of you, oh, well, you know, they make up excuses for it. And I never call anybody uh, 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 anything. Uh, you know, I call a duck a duck. Amen. I mean, I call a chicken a chicken. Amen. And I call a Christian a Christian. The Scripture says you'll know them by the fruit that you bear. And none of us here are judges, but we are all fruit testers. Amen. 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 And so if you are a Christian, it better be obvious. If you're a duck, I know you're a duck because you walk like a duck, you talk like a duck, you quack like a duck, you waddle like a duck. Right. And if you're a Christian, a Holy Ghost filled Christian, you better walk like one, talk like one, act like one, shout like one. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can't be silent. We can't live in the closet. And we can definitely not be passive Pentecostals. That's right. Amen. Amen. I strongly believe, amen, that we've got to be on fire from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Right. We've got to be dogmatic when it comes about the when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, good Lord. Amen. As saints of the Most High God, we must be anything but silent. As followers of Christ, our lives and light cannot be hid in the closet. It must be lived for all the world to see. And as Pentecostals, we must never be passive. Amen. And some of you aren't getting with me yet because perhaps you don't know what passive means. First, I want you to know that this church is a Pentecostal church. Amen. Amen. We are Pentecostal in our doctrine, in our worship, in everything that we do. We are Pentecostals because the first church was Pentecostal. Yes. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why you need to go back to Acts chapter 2 and find out what a Pentecostal is. But let me give you the de definition of passive. Passive is not reacting visibly to something that might be expected to produce manifestation of an emotion or feeling. You're dead. 
right? Yes, amen. I, I, if any of you come to the knowledge tonight that you just inherited a million dollars and and the message was given to you tonight, you would not be passive about it. That's passive right. is you would say, "Oh yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm happy about that." <laughs> I don't know about you. If I found out I received an extra hundred dollars tonight, I'd be like, "What?" <laughs> Yeah! I'm happy about that fact. You might think, well, there's something wrong with you. Hey, I'm not passive about anything. Praise the Lord. I can't be passive about it. Passive means not participating readily or actively. Inactive. That's why Pentecostals are not passive. So when the worship's going on, you, you can't be passive. You can't be not participating. you got to participate. Right. Amen. Yes. Woo! Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, not reacting visibly. Hey, when it's going on, you it needs to be visible that you are a Pentecostal. Yes. Amen. There's, been a, there's a song that I've tried to twist uh, their arms to learn. And it's called, I'm a Pentecostal. Amen. And it's fired up. And it's all about what Pentecostal is supposed to be and how they're supposed to act. A Amen. Pentecostal is not passive. Amen. Passive means not involving visible reactive reaction or active participation. I am anything but passive when it comes to Jesus Christ, when it comes to the church, when it comes to knowing that He's my Savior. Someone say amen. amen. From the birth of the New Testament church, it was totally the opposite of silent, passive, or something that was hid from the world. They was out there for everybody to see. They talked about it everywhere they went. They got with it everywhere they went. It didn't matter if it was on the street corner or if it was down at the old fishing hole. They brought glory to God and everybody thought there was something wrong with them. Hallelujah. There's a trend among a lot of modern day Christians to live their faith in the closet. To be silent about the Word of God and to be passive when it comes to sharing our faith and the truth of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Many Christians or so-called Christians are convinced that there's no need to be vocal or to let their light shine in this world that we're living in. Folks, you've got to be vocal about it. Amen. Amen. You've got to let the world know that there's this Savior named Jesus and He came to this earth to die for our sins and he, all of us are bound for hell, but He's made a way out. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. And we must let our light shine before this world. Amen. A lot of folks want to be wallflowers that just sort of blend in with everyone else. I don't want to blend in with this world. I don't want to blend in with modern Christianity. I want it to be obvious that there is something wrong with me. Hallelujah. Fortunately, we don't take our mandate from modern Christianity. We don't take our mandate from the world. We don't take our mandate from politicians or any other lame duck losers. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kids, when you're at school, mamas and daddies, grandmas and grandpas, uh, when you're at work, uh, amen, uh, college students, uh, when you're at college, you don't want to blend in with the rest of them. Uh, you want it to be obvious uh, that your life is being lived uh, for somebody else, uh, and His name is Jesus. Right. Amen. Our mandate comes from the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew 28 19. He gave us a mandate and it's called the Great Commission. He spoke this to His apostles and those who were gathered there that day, but it's also for us right now. Somebody say we're separate. We're separate. 
Amen. We are separate. Amen. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Amen. Go ye therefore. He wasn't just talking to Peter. Amen. He wasn't just talking to the other ten that were with Peter. He was talking to everybody that was there that day. And he's talking to you. Amen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Somebody Lord. say that name is Jesus. 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 Amen. Acts chapter 5 in the New Living Translation. Amen. It says the captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. They went to arrest the apostles, but they did it silently because they were afraid that the people there would stone them or would get mad or upset about this. Then they brought the apostles before the high council where the high priest could confronted them. It says, didn't we tell you never again to teach in this man's name? Right. So they had been preaching. They had been teaching. They had been baptizing people. Right. And everybody was getting upset about it. Everybody was getting mad. Hey, you know, we're just good old Jews. We're, we're, we're from, a, you know, we got a lot of tradition here. Uh, and, and you're taking these people out of our, our traditionalism. Uh, you're taking them out of what they know. You're taking them from grandma and grandpa's religion the mom and daddy's religion and, and you're baptizing them in, in Jesus' name. You've got this, this new doctrine that you're teaching and preaching and they were all upset about it. Said, didn't we tell you never again to teach in this man's name? He demanded. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about Him and you want to make us responsible for His death. And then verse 29, Peter said and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than any human authority. Amen. 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 Political correctness, uh, politicians, uh, the rest of the world, and everybody else, uh, all traditionalism, even traditional Christianity, say, hey, you need to be silent. You need to keep your su stuff to yourself. Uh, you don't need to be so bold about it. Hey, my God said to stand up uh, and, and shout it uh, from the hilltop. All right. All right. Hallelujah. We got to obey God yes. rather than what human authority said. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Others will tell you, hey, uh, you just keep your belief to yourself uh, uh, and, and we'll be all right. I want you to know tonight we are salt and light to reach this lost and dying world. We must separate ourselves from the mindset that says you do your thing and I'll do mine. I'll live my life and let everyone else live theirs. Whatever will be, will be. Right. I want you to know, no, 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 no. We can't be that way. Amen. That's right. The love of Jesus Christ must flow from us. Amen. And the love of Jesus Christ has a desire to reach out to those who are lost and give them salvation. And I don't care what it is that they believe. If they don't believe what the Bible says, they are lost. Amen. So we, that is the significance of separation. You see, the world says be quiet about it. But no, we've got to separate ourselves from that and realize that if I'm quiet about it, somebody's soul will be lost. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 16, Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Shining your light does not mean you hide it underneath your coat. Right? Yeah, even Jesus said a light cannot be hid under a bushel. A, a, a candle cannot be put under the bed. Uh, amen. It's got to put, be put out where, for everyone to see. That's what a light is for. Right? Amen. 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 A light is to make a difference. Uh, amen. And we've been given the light uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, most Americans call themselves uh, spiritual people and Christians. Uh, amen. I did some research. There's a, 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 a George Barna, who is the head of the Barna Research Group, does a lot of religious studies and a lot of religious uh, 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 research. And he said, 
Most Americans call themselves spiritual people and Christians. Yet why is spiritual transformation so rare and fleeting? That means a lot of people call themselves Christian, but there is no transformation in them from what they were before they were a Christian and, and what they are once they say they become a Christian. Uh -huh. Why is this? So we released a major study this year exploring this timeless and timely question. Most of Barnes Group's work through the years has shown the rarity of lasting spiritual transformation in people's lives. In other words, they come to know Jesus, there was a little bit of a change in them, but it didn't last. Uh huh. Somebody say, uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's got to be a lasting transformation in us. Amen. Amen. God is real. God is right. Amen. And if that transformation dies, it's not God's fault. That's right. Someone say amen. 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 Uh, so, for example, among those who believe they are Christians, just one fifth say they live in a way that makes them completely dependent upon God. So 20% of people, 100%, everybody knows what 100% is? 20% of those people, one-fifth. In other words, if you have 10 people who call themselves to be Christians, only two of them live in a way that it's obvious that they are dependent upon God. Yes. That's, not good. That's not good. A similar proportion of Christians claim that the single most important decision they have made ever made in their life was to invite Jesus to forgive them and to become their Savior. Just one-sixth of Christians say they are totally committed to engaging in personal spiritual development. We need to be serious about developing and growing in Christ. Amen. Someone say amen. 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 This year, George Barna's Maximum Faith Project added new knowledge about the obstacles and also pointed out to significant insights that could lead to a deeper spiritual transformation for individuals. The research revealed that most Christians simply do not understand the obstacles that they face on the spiritual journey. Folks, when you get in this life living in the kingdom of God and you get in this journey on your way to heaven, you're going to face some obstacles. Amen. That's not speed bumps. A speed bump is not an obstacle. I don't know if any of you have ever been on an obstacle course. Some of you military folks or those of you who are want to be military and you've ever been on an obstacle course, uh, it's not a cakewalk. As a matter of fact, if you're not prepared to go through it, you're not going to make it through it. I remember, amen, and, and I don't need to give too much because i got a long way to go here. My first trip in basic training on the obstacle course. I was a, a chubby fella, amen, and I was out of shape, but I wasn't going to fail. I just knew I wasn't going to fail. Brother Chopper, I don't remember what part of the obstacle course the rope is going over that long, great big old mud puddle, amen. But I was at Fort Seal, Oklahoma in, in February, so it was freezing cold, out there. You know, Brother Robert, what it's like in Oklahoma slide in February. What's that? Slide for life. Okay, it's called the slide for life. Okay, I got across. Uh, I was going across the slide for life. And for some reason or another, I made it across. But the drill sergeant didn't think that I did a good enough job. I made it from one side to the other. Uh huh. So I got off and got, got down. And I was going. He said, go back. Private. Go back. Yeah, I can't argue with the man, but I got on the slide for life again. Go through that obstacle. Again, the same obstacle. You want to know what happened the second time? I didn't make it through. And I fell down in that great big old mud puddle in the middle of February, freezing to death. That wasn't fair, Drill Sergeant, that you did that to me, but I couldn't tell him that. Right. Sometimes in this journey that we're on, there are some obstacles. And sometimes we think, oh, I made it through that one. And then all of a sudden, you're going, you have to go back and go through that same obstacle. Yes. Hey, that ain't fair. There are some obstacles in this life, in this journey, living for God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, there is. Sometimes you've got to go yes. through them twice. Right. Unfortunately, sometimes you've got to go through them three or four times. Yes. 
But I want you to know, hang on in there and somebody say amen. 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 There's a transformation that's going to take place in your life if you will hang on in there. There are some obstacles, but I tell you tonight, if you'll make it through them, Jesus is with you. And let somebody say amen. 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 We've got to understand, amen, that, that there are four common barriers to transformation. Some of them include lack of commitment, unwillingness to fully repent, confusing activity for growth, and the failure to engage in genuine, accountable community. A lot of times the reason people don't transform into the Christian that God wants them to be is because of this right here. Because of the lack of commitment. Right. I don't know, God, I'm willing to do this, but I can't give you all of me. It's also because we're not willing to fully repent. Because you know what repentance means? It's not just be meaning feeling sorrowful in your heart. It means that you turn away from that sinful lifestyle. It means you make a 180 and you walk in the opposite direction. Amen. Repentance is not always something that is a weepy, weepy, moany, moany. Yes. Sometimes repentance is just making up your mind. I've got to turn around and walk yes. in a different direction. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. And sometimes repentance is all on me. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. amen. And so that's why there's not that fully, full transformation there. Amen. And then also it's confusing activity for growth. Just because I'm busy doing things in the kingdom, I'm actually growing. You could be involved in every little thing that we've got going on in this church and never grow spiritually. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. And I'm going to stop there because I could spend all night there. Amen. And then a failure to engage in genuine, accountable community. You see, people want to be in the church, but they don't want to be accountable to anybody. Amen. You mind your own business. You don't tell me how to live my life. This is America. Well, folks, I want you to know, uh, this is not America. This is the kingdom of God. Amen. And Praise we're living our life unto God. I've heard people say before, it's nobody's business what I do. Oh, yes, it is. Once you call yourself Jesus, uh, a part of the kingdom of God and a child of Christ, it is His business what you do. Amen. Right? Yes. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of prayer. <laughs> Americans are struggling to determine how faith, Christianity, and church fit into contemporary life. Well, I want you to know it doesn't fit into contemporary life. Because the contemporary world says that the church and Christianity have no place in it. That's why we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen. I don't need to know how Christianity and the church fit in this world. All I need to know is that Christianity and the church is here as a light for the world to see so that they can make it to heaven. Yes. Amen. Right. This research explored many aspects of this study, including Christian leadership, Americans' theological views, Christian businesses and brands, and the perceived role of churches. What does the role? What is the role of the church in my life? In 2011, the Bar Group delved into many subjects of faith and culture, including the changing role of faith and Christianity. The changing role of faith and Christianity. Faith and Christianity does not change. Amen. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. God said, "I am the same yesterday, today." And forever. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. It doesn't change. Thank Someone you. say amen. amen. One of those shifts uh, is the relatively unknown nature of Christian leaders. Only Billy Graham, the Pope, Barack Obama, and Joel Osteen were mentioned by one, by more than one out of 50 adults uh, as the most significant Christian leaders. Huh? Really? Yeah. This is who, one out of 50 Americans, they noted these people as Christian leaders. My goodness. We are in bad shape. What's more, 41% of Americans are unable to identify any individual who they consider to be an influential Christian. Almost half of people who claim to be Christians cannot name an influential Christian in their life. 
Folks, it's because too many people are trying to live a silent life. There are too many passive Christians. There are too many Christians who are living in the closet. Another way in which Christianity hit the mainstream radar was prominent discussion about hell. The issue sparked so much controversy and vigorous debate in part because America is essentially split, split down the middle on most issues of universalism and religious pluralism. For example, 43% of Americans said it doesn't matter what religious faith you follow because they all teach the same lessons. Doesn't matter what you are, Buddhist, Hindu, Christian, Muslim, 54% of Americans disagree. Half of Americans, 50%, believe that all people are eventually saved or accepted by God no matter what they do. 50% believe that everybody's going to go to heaven. It doesn't matter what you do because God's just going to love you. Folks, the problem is we're quiet about this. We're, we're afraid that if I, if I don't tell somebody, hey, Jesus Christ is the light of the world, if I tell somebody that, I, I, I may not have a job. I may be looked as a, a, a cuckoo bird. I may, uh, you know, there's something wrong with this person. I can't speak out about this stuff. With the nation's population so divided, expect to see these issues continue to stoke lively conversations. Despite the fact that Christianity's role is changing. Listen to this. Christianity's role is changing. Christianity's role should never have changed. Uh -huh. That's why it's time to stand up. And I'm not talking about being dogmatic about stuff that doesn't matter. I'm talking about standing up for this soul-saving message. Amen. Stand up about the things that matter. Heaven and hell issues. You must repent of your sins. You must be baptized in Jesus' name. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must live a life that is acceptable unto God. Self-described Christians dominate America but wrestle with four aspects of spiritual death. And I could go on and on with these uh, different things. Uh, one of them is commitment, uh, as I mentioned. The second is repentance. Uh, the third is activity. And the fourth uh, is spiritual community. And I won't go in depth on those because I mentioned them a moment ago. But that's why we are not transforming into what God wants us to be. That's why we are silent. Well, I, you know, I, I want to be a Christian, uh, but I don't want to be out there like that. You can't be a Christian then. I'm sorry. Amen. It doesn't work that way. I don't want to be identified with modern worldly Christianity. There is significance in separation. And someone say amen. amen. You see the world says you need to be silent. Even modern Christians say you need to be silent. We go, to a, uh, we go to political platforms and political events. Uh, we go to sporting events. Uh, we go to public meetings. Uh, and now they are inviting several different faiths. Uh, and, and people of different faiths will get up there and say their little prayer. Folks, uh, I'm not going to go anywhere and, 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 and pray if Hope County, and I've been invited and I have went before and prayed at public meetings, county commissioner meetings, and city council meetings uh, uh, before. But if they ever said, hey, we're going to have somebody from this faith and somebody from that faith, we're going to have a Muslim and a Buddhist and, and we'll have a Christian here to represent, hey, I'm not going there and praying. I'm sorry. There is only one way. That's right. And I'm not sharing the platform with anybody. Amen. Jesus gets it all. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Galatians 6 and 17 says, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. We must separate ourselves from what the conformists say a Christian should be, and we need to get back to what the Bible says we are to be if we belong to Jesus. If I belong to Jesus, then it should be obvious that I belong to Jesus. Right. Someone say amen. amen. 
Some sad facts are one out of nine young people who grow up with a Christian background lose their faith in Christianity. That's not bad. One out of nine. That means eight of them uh, keep their faith. More commonly, young Christians wander away from the institutional church, a, a pattern that the researchers labeled as nomads. Roughly four out of ten young Christians uh, fall into this category. In other words, 40% of them, they wander away from the faith. They still call themselves Christians, but they are far less active in church than they were during high school. I don't care what you call yourself. If it's not obvious that you are that, then you aren't that. That's right. Amen. If I am an orange, and I wake up one day and say, I'm an apple, come and take a bite out of me. And someone comes and says, well, no, you're an orange. No, 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 no. I'm an apple. I'm an apple. Hey, it's obvious what you are, and you can't change that. Amen. So if you're a Christian, it better be obvious that you are a Christian. Amen. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, from the inside to the outside, your attitudes, your actions, your, the way that you talk, the way that you smell, it better be all about Jesus. Yeah. Someone say amen. 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 Another two out of ten young Christians were categorized as exiles. Those who lost, uh, who feel lost between church culture and the society they feel called to influence. Folks, you shouldn't feel exiled. Amen. Young person, never break away from the kingdom of God. Someone say amen. amen. The sentiments of exiles include feeling that I want to find a way to follow Jesus that connects with the world I live in. That's fine. But this is their mindset. It says, I want to be a Christian without separating myself from the world around me. Folks, if you are a Christian, a true Christian, you are automatically separated from the world around you. Amen. Amen. Overall, about 3 out of 10 young people who grow up with a Christian background stay faithful to church and to faith throughout their transitions from the teen years through their 20s. That's not good. Only 30%. And we've even seen that over the past few years as our young people have graduated from high school and went on. Right. We're following that same trend and, and maybe a little bit worse. That's why I'm so concerned when I see our, our young people leaving and going off to college and, and whatever else. Because I, I, I know what the pool of the world. That's why we are so radical right now. That's why I won't stop being radical. Someone say amen. Amen. more scriptures here. Amen. Romans 12 and 12, 12 and 2, 1 says in the NLT, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Give your bodies to God. Oh, I'll give my heart to God, but not my body. No, this is what Paul said. He said, I plead with you to give your bodies to God, to God because all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. Not that the world finds acceptable, but that He finds acceptable. Amen. Amen. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Amen. Don't let the world change the way you think. Let God do it. Glory. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Yes. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. I believe it's in the NIV. It says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings. Becoming like Him in His death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this, I haven't got there yet is what, what, what the uh, author is saying here. Or have already arrived at my goal. But I press on. Everybody say, I press on. Press on. To take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it. But one thing I do. Forgetting 
what is behind and pressing toward what is ahead. I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Once you come to God, you forget about where you came from. You don't go back there. Thank God for delivering you from the world, but you don't ever want to go back to there. And someone say amen. There was a significant, noticeable difference between the early church and the world. Everywhere they went, people knew who they were and what they stood for. I heard a guy today who claims, oh, he's active in his church. He does this, he does that. He's inviting me all the time. But I heard him today several different times use the F word and say many things were very, very contrary. Folks, I'm sorry. You don't do that. I've also seen people who claim to be Christian not use dirty words, but their attitude and their actions were so vile that I saw the devil. I'm sorry, I did. In the way they were acting. Well, oh, what are you saying? They don't have God in them? Folks, you know them by the fruit they bear. Amen. Someone say amen. 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 And that's why I pray every day, Lord, help me. Because I don't want to be that. Everywhere they went, people knew who were they, who they were, and what they stood for. One last scripture, Luke nine. And I ask you to stand to your feet. It says then he said to them all, "Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. If you really want to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, you must deny yourself, take up their cross daily, not on Sundays." Not when you feel like it, but daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose, lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words... The Son of Man will be ashamed of them when He comes in His glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. I don't need to expound on that because that verse is so plain enough right there. I hope you get it. If Amen. not, go home and look it up. Put it on your mirror so when you wake up in the morning you see that. You can't be ashamed of Jesus. Right. You can't be ashamed of being a Christian. Amen. You can't be ashamed of this Gospel. You can't be ashamed of praising and worshiping. You can't be ashamed... Amen. the kingdom of God. Because if you are, unfortunately, He's going to be ashamed of you. Amen. The significance of separation. We cannot be silent saints. We cannot be closet Christians. And if you are a Pentecostal, you better never be passive about anything that you do. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're going to pray, and my prayer is that this church and this body of believers will turn our world upside down. Yes.